Hello, I'm going to talk about harmonics 5, 7, and 9, also what we mean by octaves when in, in regards to harmonic charts, and what second order harmonics are. This is part 5 in a series of videos on harmonic charts. I think this video may be one more to cover some additional theory and some basic background to what I call vibrational astrology, and then I think we're ready to start looking at charts of some famous people and seeing how this actually all works out when we when we look at some um, charts of people. With just a little more theory, and then we'll start looking at these charts. Uh, okay, let's talk about what we mean by octaves. There are certain harmonics that we call octave harmonics, and that's just starting with one and and doubling. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, and two fifty-six. We generally stop somewhere between three hundred and sixty and 500. I have found that harmonics all the way up to 360 um, have an, an influence on the person. That may sound almost unbelievable, um, but but is true. Um, our model seems to work very, very well using that assumption. Um, so we'll stop at 256. So we call these the octave harmonics. You're, you're doubling, uh, starting with one, and they are the driving forces in the chart. In astrology, we normally look at squares as either difficult or challenging or motivating. I happen to think of them as motivating, driving forces. And what happens is, it is true that squares are motivating and driving, and you might say a hard aspect. Also, the opposition is a hard aspect, which is the second harmonic, one half. And we can keep doubling uh, the 8, 16, 32, and so on. They're all driving, motivating forces. What's the difference between these higher octaves harmonics and the lower ones? The higher ones become more internal, and by etern in internal I mean more mental. The low ones, up to about eight, are more physical, like physically expressive. And then up to about 32 is more interpersonal, less bound to your own personal expression, more uh, often inclined to things like literature, uh, academics, it's it's not as personal, it's ideas, things beyond your own personal security and so on. And then above 32, it's very internal, and, and above about 64, up in this range here, it becomes really much more abstract, just the pure thought of, of something. Um, so that, that's what happens, and these high harmonics actually give talent. Um, so they don't become weak, they become less physical and more mental as, as we go in to the higher harmonics. That's the theory. I'm giving you a little more background about how this harmonic theory works in, in, in what we call vibrational astrology, a particular system of applying this idea of harmonics. Give you a little more background and before we start looking at actual charts of people and seeing how all these ideas apply. Now, if you take the number three, which would be the trine, one-third, which is a soft aspect, and you start doubling um, three, six, twelve, twenty-four, forty-eight, ninety-six, and one ninety-two, don't memorize these numbers. You don't need to memorize them um, with vibrational astrology. You don't really need to, to memorize a bunch of things. You'll just look at the harmonic charts. They're going to figure everything out for you. But just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, these harmonics... Well, you're, you're doubling, which, which adds um, a hard number. For example, 12 is 3 times 4. So you're getting the softness of 3 and the hardness of 4. That's why 12 is such a universal number. It's like the combination of, of yin and yang. It's, it's, um, and all these are. You're, you're starting with the soft, but then you're doubling, and they become resources to you. These are harmonics where you want to do something. The drive and passion and motivation is not as intense as with these harmonics, the octave harmonics, but these I call octaves of three. So they're, they're octaves of three, these we can just call octave harmonics, starting with one. So they're doubling from three, and so there's some softness, because they're based on three, but there's some hardness, because you're, you're multiplying by four times eight by these numbers up here, and they become resources, things you want to do, um, and that you're, you have a talent for, uh, a proclivity to doing it, not as much neediness and as as with these, where there's like almost a desperate need to do these things. Okay, and then this is an important point. 
harmonics 5, 7, and 9, and their octaves, as you double them. So when I say harmonic 5, it also means 5, 10, 20, 40, as you double them. Or 7, 7, 14, 28, 56. When you double, you're not really changing the quality. It's the same thing that happens in music. If you, if you uh, take a string and you cut it in half, like a guitar string, you cut it in half, you're doubling the cycles per second of the note, you're back to the same note, you really haven't changed the quality of the note. So in music we find that that um, the frequencies are like a spiral, they come back again, uh, otherwise we wouldn't have octaves. The notes would just keep getting higher and higher and higher without returning back. Um, so they return back to the same feeling an octave higher, and it works exactly the same way in harmonic astrology. As you double the number, which is the same as doubling the frequency, which is the same as taking half the distance, um, you're going up an octave and, you're be and it becomes more internal. Um, and internal means less ex outwardly expressive and, and more of an, of an inner uh, a thought, uh, basically. Okay, so, um, and also uh, an inner control, an inner uh, um, attunement to it. Um, this will become clearer when we look at charts. Okay, so the harmonics 5, 7, and 9 and their octaves are the, like the fundamental qualities of the soul. So the, the octaves, octave harmonics starting with one basic drive, mold, the octaves of 3 are resources available to you, and 5, 7, 9 add the color, add, add depth, they add soul to it, because 5 is play. You can think of it like this. What if a child never plays? They don't, you know, they, they, they don't dress up or laugh or do silly things or, or play around, try different styles or something. There's something wrong. Children should play. So when a child, if a child doesn't play at all and has no sense of playing, we have problems. There's something missing in life. It becomes dull. Um, there's no imagination. There's no creativity. Um, it's not fun. Is life is supposed to have five in it, so it's like a it's like a deficiency um, if you don't have this in in your life, and it really is becomes clear if you think of children. Children should have five. They should also have seven. What is seven? Um, seven is focus and discipline. This focus and discipline. It's it's a, a concentration, getting quiet, getting still, uh, and if a child can't focus his or her, his attention or her attention, we have problems. So the child with a lot of septiles, this is true for adults too, but I think somehow with children it's, it's maybe a clearer image, when, when they have a lot of these seventh harmonic aspects, they're able to be quiet, focus, and be more mature. And then the nine gives a, a sense of participating in the world, integration with a world beyond your personal needs, and that's why we teach children to say thank you. And when a child doesn't say thank you, doesn't recognize they're part of a bigger world that they participate in and benefits them and, and becomes part of their lives, we have problems. So the five, seven, and nine give these basic, important, fundamental qualities that are important to the person. Okay, um, and here's an example of the doubling, getting octaves of a harmonic. So you take five... You double it, five means play, two means with others, essentially, is like a polarity, so two-fifths is play with others. Then you double it, and you get play with others. So actually a two-fifths aspect and a one-tenth, three-tenths have some similarity um, of, of playing with others, because you, you have a two effect in both of these. And then you go to the twenty, the, the one-twentieth, three-twentieths, five-twentieths, seven-twentieths, nine-twentieths, the twentieth harmonic aspects, is five times four a need to play? What happens when you go to 40? It's a need to mentally play. So the person gets creative ideas, maybe plays games that involve strategy or different approaches. They get more into the, the way the play is done and, and the approach to it and style and strategy of it. And then 80th would be basically the same as 40th. It's, it's need to mentally play. And then when you double and you get up to 160 and 320, it becomes very abstract, and the person has creative ideas that you don't even necessarily think of as being uh, expressive, not necessarily that they're painting 
or you know expressing in some other way, but they just have an originality it leads to original think thoughts when you get up these high harmonics. Okay, and like I said, we stop usually around 360 to 500, so we would stop there. Okay, um, the other thing um, I want to mention is that in the fifth harmonic chart, just to review, I talked about this in the previous video, in the fifth harmonic chart, the one-fifth and two-fifths aspect in the natal chart appears conjunctions, the tenths appears oppositions, the twentieths appear as squares. This is should be obvious by now. It's five times four. In the fifth harmonic chart, these fortieths become the semi-square and sesquiquadrat, one eighth and three eighths. The eightieth harmonics will appear as sixteenths. Sixteen times five is eighty. And then to see the hundred and sixtieth harmonic aspects, it's now a thirty-second harmonic in the fifth harmonic chart. We generally can't draw all these aspects in the chart, it gets confusing. So, in the previous video I talked about going to a higher harmonic chart to see them. Um, so you can always see up to a certain level within a harmonic chart. And we'll see more examples of this and becomes more practical as we apply it to looking at actual charts. But this is to give you an idea of the range of harmonics that you can see within a given chart. If you're in the fifth harmonic chart, you're actually seeing octaves all the way up to 80. See that? You're not just seeing 5th, you're also seeing 10th, 20th, 40th, and 80th because you'll see these aspect lines in there. And generally, uh, our habit is to only draw aspect lines up to 16. Beyond that, it just gets hard to, to see all those different lines. Okay, so you can see a range of these octaves up to a certain level. Then if you want to see these in a harmonic chart, you're going to have to zoom in, so to speak, to maybe a, a 20th harmonic level and then you'll pick up more of these aspects. Because at the 20th harmonic level, the 20th harmonic aspects become conjunctions, the next 40 become oppositions, these become squares, these become 8th, and these become 16th. So if you do a 20th harmonic chart, you would be able to see these as 16th. Okay, so hopefully that's beginning to make sense. I discussed that in the previous uh, video, and, and here I'm giving an example of it. Okay, there's only one more thing I want to talk about in this video and that is second order harmonics where you take the basic numbers like 5 and 7 and when you multiply 5 which is play and 7 which is focus you get a focused play which is 35 we'll see that this 35th harmonic shows up very often in in athletes uh, also uh, people who have uh, a lot of skill, excellent technique in, in music because they practice playing. And if you're going to be a great athlete or a great entertainer, entertainer, you have to enjoy the practice. So they enjoy practicing and perfecting their craft and their skill, 35. And we'll, we'll talk more about these, but what I want to emphasize right now is that these second order, by second order I mean you take two basic numbers and you multiply them, are very important. And what you'll notice is this. In the fifth harmonic chart, a 35th harmonic chart will be a seventh harmonic aspect. And in the seventh harmonic chart, it'll be a fifth harmonic aspect. Let, let me show you an example of it. Um, let's see, we've got a fifth harmonic chart for Buddy Holly. This is very small on your screen, but notice that Moon and Saturn, it says septile, means they're a seventh. So there are seventh aspect, one seventh or septile, in the fifth harmonic chart, which means that the seventh harmonic chart, Moon and Saturn, are a fifth. They're a quintile. So that's the idea. Let me show you one more example. In the fifth harmonic chart, Moon to Venus and Jupiter are noviles. It says quad novile, quad novile. Those are ninth. So moon in the fifth harmonic is a ninth, and then in the ninth harmonic, the moon to Venus and Jupiter become fifth. So all I'm really saying is that 45 equals 5 times 9. So if you're in the fifth harmonic, it looks like a ninth harmonic, and if you're in the ninth harmonic chart, it looks like a fifth harmonic chart. It looks like a fifth harmonic aspect. So that's just to, to show you that interchange and how that works. Um, 
Okay, so just to give you a little more background on, on this, in, in all these first videos, I've only been doing the fifth harmonic chart. And some people have asked me, what's so special about the fifth harmonic chart? Why fifth? Why fifth? Well, I'm just using that as an example. And it's no more important than the seventh and ninth. So I want to give you a perspective on that. That the five, seven, and nine are the fundamental qualities, um, fundamental important qualities uh, of a person, things that are really important to function as, in a healthy way as an adult. And then as you go up to higher harmonics, for example, 11 and 13, we're going to see they're both unstable and moving and dynamic in different ways. And uh, so this gives you a perspective on the meanings of the different harmonics. Uh, later on, we'll learn the meanings of all the harmonics, how they work together. But you have enough information now that I want to start looking at charts, applying these ideas, and seeing how it really works and it will become more alive for you. Well, we've already seen that with Buddy Holly, with how that Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, and the fifth harmonic describes him. We're going to start looking at more charts, getting more detail, and have this all come alive. We, we've pretty much covered a lot of theory. I think it's time to start seeing it in action and looking at more charts. Okay, my friends, thank you for listening. God bless. Namaste.